I'd really appreciate if, if one of you would feel uh, comfortable to, to actually define what danger theory is and what adaption is for our audience. I don't know who, who feels up for that. Me Anna? or Anna? Maybe. Anna? Um, I, can, I can give it a go and then Peter can support me. Um, he's the professor. <laughs> <laughs> She's the immunologist. <laughs> um. Well, um, so danger theory is this theory that was um, proposed by um, Polly Singer in 1994, which was a time when um, you know immunology was going undergoing some sort of change. We had this model of the self versus non-self that was proposed in the late 50s, and then that sort of evolved when people said, "Well, you know, we need more signaling. This is not quite a complete model." And then um, you know, um, other another immunologist, um, Charles Janeway, came up with um, the um, self versus infectious non-self to sort of give a bit more resolution to what he what we meant by non-self and then um in i think that was in 89 and then in 94 polly um or professor matzinger had come up with you know it's not just self versus non-self certainly there must be something more and she said you know it is the danger signaling or danger theory and basically what she said is that not just your immune cells but every single cell in your body has got the possibility to send out this danger signal. So in immunology, we've got two main signals that would sort of kickstart an immune response. And the first is holding out that poster and saying, hey, there's something wrong here, and your immune, cells, or your immune cells sort of traffic there. And then the second would be the thing holding out that poster and your immune cells saying, yeah, this is definitely non-self. And then there's another signaling cascade that happens and she said no you need a third signal and that third signal is that you need danger molecules coming in to sort of push that along and um, while you know even for Professor Matt Singer she's you know it's it, she, it, she hasn't quite um, fleshed it out as you know we understand the flesh uh, the self versus non-self model um, <laughs> there are still some loopholes with that theory. Um, and then with adaptation, um, it's basically challenging the idea that your immune system is stagnated. It says, you know, it has to be contextual. You know, you have to put in the environment, you have to put in what is going on, and your immune system is able to change in a reversible way to adapt to whatever is going on. Um, yeah, no, yeah, I agree with that. And if you think of it, walking into a dark room, right, you don't see anything from the beginning. And then after 30 seconds or so, your vision adapts and you start seeing contour contours around you and so on. And what that basically illustrates is that the immune system is a sensory system, just like your vision, and it must sense relative changes, not absolute changes. I hope that makes sense. So if you go from, from one state to another, um, it's the change that's important. It's not the absolute uh, amount. And, and, and because in order to do that, the system must constantly adapt, just like your vision, like your hearing or your senses. And, and, and so that fits with the idea that adaptation on goes on all the time. However, none of these things would explain why in COVID, for example, the majority have a very mild infection and then a few individuals have a massive severe infection and so these things are not there's something more here there's a layer of regulation that we still don't fully understand which causes this enormous variability among people that's interesting i mean yeah go uh, can i uh, yeah i'd um, just like to emphasize and and um, illustrate some of the these points in infectious diseases um that infectious diseases mostly the damage that you get is caused by your immune system, mostly. I, I work on mostly on two diseases, tuberculosis and meningitis, and they're both really the damage is caused by the immune system. And uh, the immune system is the most dangerous thing in this room. It could kill you in a minute. If your immune system is activated, these dangerous signals, as T N A and uh, Peter have been talking about, they are so strong that you can get allergic shock that will kill you in minutes. There's nothing, no microbe can do that, but your immune system can if it's activated. So your immune system has this good and bad. It causes damage. It, it will clear diseases, 
it will cause um it will um uh, kill microbes but in doing so it has to kill cells and when these danger signals get to high level it creates it for example in tuberculosis one of the diseases i work with it will cause holes in your lungs it will cause so much damage that your lungs will fill up with holes and they will fill up with fluid and eventually you'll drown in your own lungs because they've got so much fluid in them and that's mostly caused by the immune system Similarly, meningitis, another terrible disease, it's called, caused by one of the things that actually also happens in COVID, a cytokine storm, as it's called, where the danger signals are so strong that they cause your immune system to go into hyper mode, in which the kind of information that you normally get if you, say, cut your finger and you'll get some information added on your finger will actually happen in your entire body. And all your blood vessels will dilate to allow fluid to flow out of your body and you go into shock, which means that your blood pressure will drop down so low that you're not able to perfuse your, your organs. And again, that can happen in, uh, in meningitis in a matter of hours. So, and that's caused really by the immune system. So that, that balance is a delicate balance and um, it can be triggered in lots of different directions and much of the damage that the microbes cause are actually caused by our immune system but without it we'll be dead yeah. so it's a tricky it, one it, can i can i just say that the only thing you know um it, the immune system is a very powerful system but i would use the word potentially um you know i would i would qualify what you've said with potentially because it's also very heavily regulated it's very, very he heavily regulated. So it wouldn't, um, um, uh, you, you do need the cytokines at the start of your immune response in order to initiate the immune response and to sort of pass it along to the next cells that will do what they do. But that balance is kept very much under control. It, it does get dis dysregulated in certain cases, but um, at the bulk majority of the times it is kept under control. That's really interesting. I mean, Thankfully. also reassuring to hear that we can't just go nuclear at the drop of a hat. Um, so, I mean, just thinking back to the question, which was, you know, can, can these two new sort of theories um, or relatively new theories of this danger theory where you have these sort of signals that indicate that, you know, there's danger happening. And the second theory being this sort of adaption theory of the immune system where, you know, it can learn and be smart and adapt, well, literally adapt to, to its environment. So can these two sort of new ways of understanding the immune system actually help address disease was the question. But I feel like already in what you, what, what the three of you have been saying is it becomes very apparent that disease is almost too broad a term, right? That yeah. you've all discussed, there's microbes, there's things from the outside, there's what happens when the body suddenly starts to see other parts of the body is different, the effect of that. I mean, let, just to be really basic here, what is disease? <laughs> well, uh, well, disease. I mean, I'm, I'm a doctor, right? The first thing you learn is that disease is the uh, uh, is anything that is, you know, a disruption of balance or homeostasis and, and so anything on. Anything, anything really. Okay. Um, and health is defined as the absence of a disease. Hmm. So you could you could philosophize, you yeah, know, yeah. have well, a long discussion around that, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think the, the this idea that danger theory and adaptation will explain. Um, will explain the immune system better than self non self i think is clear okay. but it doesn't explain it all yeah. right. um, there are there are you know think of transplantation you transplant an organ from one individual to another one um, that doesn't necessarily trigger danger signals um, it doesn't necessarily lead to an adaptive change but it's rejected the organ is rejected um, that's sort of the basis for the self non self discrimination from the beginning However, if you do the exact same procedure very early in life, that's tolerated. And in mice, for example, you can do this and then you don't need to suppress the immune system of the accepting host. So um, adaptation, the point of that is that adaptation, yes, but it's very different. Um, the system is very amenable during a certain window of time and then the for the rest of the life it's more static. Um, and so we have to also keep that in mind that there are different phases just like puberty is another developmental phase where we have a unique biology and physiology and so yeah. on. That's interesting. I mean, what do you think? John um, yeah, I think it's, 
uh, it's very interesting how your immune system adapts to yourself and learns who you are really and okay I'm not gonna I'm not going to um, attack this tissue and that balance is, is critical to health and it keeps you alive and microbes also learn to manipulate it there's another bug called the leprosy bacillus and for reasons that we don't really understand at all when the leprosy bacillus infects you it switches off your immune system's attack to it you become allergic as it's called to it the leprosy bacillus so it's it's somehow able to manipulate the immune system to say to the immune system hey i'm i'm okay i'm one of the boys i'm, I'm one of your cells don't hit me and lots of microbes can do that and i think what would be really good and and scientists are working on this if we could understand how microbes manipulate our immune system we might be able to better manipulate our immune system in order to prevent a lot of the disease as uh, Peter's already said I think that a lot of the pathogenesis of COVID for example is actually the immune system in disarray it's, it's doing too much we really need to understand that and maybe dissecting how over millions of years the pathogens that we are dealing with have we've dealt with them and we managed to um, live comfortably with many of them uh, learning how that works will could help us to kind of correct some of the conditions that we still suffer from I mean I, I think I said already right so I'm, I'm a biologist as well I love this idea that like the more we learn about the immune system the more we'll be able to step in and help regulate it to sort of better better facilitate health in, in, in those circumstances, basically. So I, I really appreciate that. That said, I'm now going to sort of push us a little bit more into the realms of philosophy, so strap in. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.